Well, what is the redshift? The redshift is a key concept that astronomers use to see how far away things are. The term can be understood literally as the wavelength of the light is stretched as things go pulled away from us because they're traveling so fast, moving away. <laughs> well, that's just ridiculous. Light is just slowing down. Okay, Einstein said that light in a vacuum just goes a certain speed. He's correct. But space is not a vacuum. It is loaded with the particles that I'm showing you here. It is saturated with the particles of light that go from every luminous body through the universe until they collide with something. Einstein was right. In a vacuum, light will not slow down. We do not have a vacuum. Okay, these are the particles that exist. Fermi Lab agrees. We have found them, the black and the red, and we have also found them in green and in blue, which they agree about. And this is the black fixed, never changes. This can be the different colors and is all the energy pr primarily. The other one is just a bowling ball. And this is what they say, Fermi Lab, about the quantum foam, that empty space isn't empty. There's all kinds of particles there, and they push against the particles that are coming against them. Let's take a look at that. I mean, it's quite obvious. This is the problem right here. Don Lincoln is stuck on the standard model. Cannot get off it, and it is not correct. All right, don't forget, this is Don Lincoln again. Here's the particles. We found them. Let me show you. As you see, those are the Fermilab particles. We found exact same particles, and they are in light, which is the smallest thing that, they, that exists, and they don't even know what light is. Don Lincoln doesn't know what light is. He sees these particles in their debris, but they don't know that they came from light. We see that they came from light, and here they are right here. Is these are the two particles. They've seen them. They know they're there. The muon and the electron neutrino attached together is called a Dirac neutrino. And then they split apart, and that's what they wanted to do is this, which we have done. And then they wanted to see these particles break into the muon and electron neutrino, which is exactly what we did right here. We broke them apart. And this is called fission, they, when they break, and fusion when they come back together. We did this, we accelerated the light, which is not supposed to happen. This is the problem, that we have broken all the laws of physics, because the laws of physics just are not correct. All right, so you've seen light speeding up. All right, that's speeding up. You've seen light slowing down. That's light coming this way, slowing down, stretching out, just red shifting. All right. This is the particles of light that are spewing out of the sun. It's a solar eclipse, and we can see they're going everywhere. Those particles are in the way of everything. That is the quantum foam that Fermilab speaks of. I have shown the two particles Fermilab knows about. We found them. We separated them and created muons and electron showers, which is fission and fusion. So I think that should be looked at. Um, and what else? Here is the actual particle. That's the green one. Of course, they come green, red, and blue. It was what we've seen. And um, here's the red one. And this is the actual way the red ones manifest themselves. They come in from here to the, the left, coming in this way. And here they are neutrinos. They're not into the photon phase yet. They have two blacks and a white. Here now they have two whites and a black. Over here they change this way. This one is sideways. I mean, this one's flat. These ones are sideways. <coughs> Those are all different types of neutrinos. And the photon is the, this one right here, the the back-to-back -back Dirac neutrinos. And at the at the Venturi, they explode. All right, and whoops. And, just to throw in something else, the reason we're overheating is because we're scrubbing through the particles that are in space. It is not empty, it is saturated with particles. And as we spin and scrub and are ripped through the arm of the Milky Way, we are concussing with those particles, creating enormous amounts of heat in that upper atmosphere called the thermosphere, thousands of degrees out here. No reason whatsoever for it to be that hot, other than the scrub. That's the reason we're overheating. And the same with the sun. 10,000 on the surface, millions where it scrubs. Totally missed by the scientists we have. 
every one of these luminous bodies is radiating out particles everywhere, which is what they call a quantum foam. Everything that goes through it has to go through it, just like going through a pool of water. It's all out there pushing back. That's what the redshift is. It's not these everything's going away. It's everything is pushing back against the light coming at us. Okay, my friends, I think I've shown pretty successfully that this is not a half-baked theory. These are my claims, and I have all the weights and the measures and all this stuff, what the particles are. I've got all kinds of documentation written about this, and I am refused to be spoken to at Fermilab. Don Lincoln has me blocked, and I, it's because I have too much information, and he's he knows he'll be done milking the cow, it appears to me. Because he asked for questions. I asked for questions and he said, no, we will never speak to you. Don't ever contact us again. So that's where I have never found such closed minds in science. I never expected scientists to react the way they do. They have no scientific interest whatsoever that I can find, especially not here at Family Lab. All right, so you know my claim is that this is what all particles are made out of, is the tiny little Dirac neutrinos. And I will show you this. And each one of those balls is a Dirac neutrino, which has a positive and a negative. And here's what the Dirac neutrinos look like. All right, this one here, I don't know. that I don't think that's real, but could be. Now, the, this is what happens in space. If there's enough dark matter, it'll separate from the, the charged particles and it'll go into a ball in the center and cre actually create a black hole. And, th and then it'll cross over with the white particles. Our Earth has to be saturated with dark matter because it's all the white particles are pulled to it. Lightning, static, electricity. We could have a hole in the center of our Earth, a black hole. Nobody knows what's in there. They, they, they can't tell you any of this stuff. Everything they have is a guess. And so far... I have seen no guesses that have been right. You see that? That is light just as it's starting to accelerate heading for the Venturi. And it's the reason you have a wave here is because the particle is back here with a magnetic field surrounding it. Its magnetic field pushes every other particle's magnetic field due to what's called the Kashmir effect. Field to field causes glow. It just happens. And every one of these is glowing because it's just got to get out of the way of the field coming through. That's push to shove. That happens in space. Not with this density, obviously. This is because we're on Earth. It's everything's crushed down. In space, they're still out there. They're out there. They're floating around. They're not really tight like this. But I'm going to tell you what. Light is slowing down, red shifting as it comes from the planets and any luminous source. They have no idea where things are in space now. None.